Are you ready to upgrade your life, love, and livelihood? If so, stay tuned because I'm going to share with you four areas to focus on that will help put your heart in harmony during this Lionsgate portal. Here we have tomorrow on August 8th, 2019. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Harmony. I'm a twin flame expert helping twin flames around the globe face fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Welcome to my weekly glow show. Today I want to welcome you to the 88 portal, the Lionsgate portal, the energy of magic and creation and fire and love and passion. And we have went through a very universal collective setup for this portal having went through July going super deep with the eclipse season to unlock those shadows to unlock the pieces of us that we've not been willing to see and bring those up to the light so that we can transmute them transmit them clear them correct them collect anything that you need and then move forward for this time of magic and abundance and creation that we're moving into. So let's first talk about, like, just briefly, the universal timeline of this being that this is the universal cosmic new year, a new beginning, a new cycle, uh, setting up new programs, which we've been letting go of all the old programs. Then let's, well, I'm going to bring this into, like, our universe, our universe, as in universe. And then I want to share with you, kind of summing this up, four things you can focus on during this energy, this timeline, that will help you use this energy to, you know, collect yourself in a way that maximizes the potential of this universal gift, this universal blessing that we've been given here. Okay, so now... The Cosmic Universal Lion's Gate is connected to Sirius. Sirius opened a portal at the beginning of this year leading up to the Lion's Gate. And in that portal, we've had different energy shifts all along setting us up for this. And in doing so, what it really has been doing is helping us to come into alignment with our heart. Now, how that works with Sirius, Sirius actually is in the sign of Cancer, 14 degrees Cancer, but the sun is in 14 um, degrees of Leo. And so when you mix the two together with, for instance, the Sirius energy being that lion energy that's connected to the Syrian energy that is at the base of the Orion spell that aligns in alignment with the pyramids, which is one reason why I personally and with clients have doing been doing a lot of pyramidal activations and a lot of connections to the pyramids and a lot of pyramidal healing um, through this portal, leading up to this portal all of July. I mean, I've done it for a long time, but July was like a big pyramid month for energy and healing leading up to this. And that's because we've been leading up to this. But in that alignment of those pyramids and the alignment of the universal collective energy, what it's doing on our inner verse is we had went through July going deeper wider to figure out what we could still let go of that didn't serve our purpose, the old programs, the, the releasing the stories, letting go and shifting timelines so that we can move forward faster, clearing our emotions and letting go of all the beliefs, rewriting the belief systems and the patterns. And we actually had been also doing a lot of family healing, family clearing, and families coming into harmonization. Well, in this timeline now, when it comes to like what you're kind of working on, as I guess I would say we're working on as a collective, is relationship harmony and purpose harmony coming into 
alignment with more love from a, you know our, our beloveds as well as our purpose and our mission. And this energy, especially being in Leo, being that heart energy, heart-based uh, connections with ourselves and you know, we want the ultimate relationship, then it means that ultimate relationship starts with us. And so uh, basically, so as we kind of are moving in this portal, this whole portal is about aligning with abundance. But to come into alignment with abundance as a person, you have to come into alignment with your heart first. And so when I talk about I help people, unlock their hidden potential and that being what's inside of them is their gifts their greatest light of their soul's frequency and vibration and to remove the interferences that's blocking a person from vibrating at their highest frequency then that pulls us out of alignment with our truth with our destiny with our abundance so that's why we're having to let go of these certain things to increase our frequency as we go up through this portal. Uh, because in this portal, not only are we, we're not, if you're in a place that needs clearing, cleansing, correcting, and you are still hanging on, and you're not willing to see the truth, in the, the hidden truths inside of you that you still need to visit, that you need to take some action, and you need to move forward with, it will still hit you there. And it, because you going into this portal, those things cannot go with you. I talked about, I think it was last video, about I was seeing this portal coming up into, we, we were entering a doorway, and we're at the door, and it's time to go through the door, and you're going to open the door and go through, and everything that you've been working for and everything you want is on the other side of the door, but you can't see it. This gateway, this lion's gate, is the doorway to what you want on the other side. And just like always, this universal cosmic energy will support you. So you, if you tap into it from that way, it will really help you. So as I was about to say, as we come into the alignment of this, this abundance, it takes coming into alignment with our heart. And the fastest way to do that is we want to tap into our greatest potential is to align with the heart. So if we want to unlock the truth and we want to activate our gifts and we want to allow love into our heart and we want to align with love and be able to experience our purpose with passion and have love and be loved, then we have to come into alignment with the heart and we have to heal the heart. And I call that heart harmony. And um, I actually will have for you a link below, a resource that's relatively new. I created a couple, two or three weeks ago. That is a heart and harmony checklist. So I'm going to place that below again because it fits perfectly to this. But as we're doing this, we're coming into the harmonization of ourselves to align with our heart. And we're also then, like as we tap into alignment and harmonize ourselves, where we are finding wholeness within, completeness within. We aren't seeing separation between us and everything. We're taking back our power. We're uh, believing in ourselves and we are knowing what our truth is and we're taking action to align um, with in our reality. So we might be taking action of things that either aren't working, that we need to take action to release, or we might need to take action to move forward and step up and step into our mission and into our purpose. So we go forward with this energy, we can use it to help um, upgrade basically our system, upgrade our energy. And the other thing about the Sirius energy, with this Syrian energy coming through at this timeline, it is the closest and the greatest amount of light, high vibrational Sirius light that comes in at the alignment of the Earth and delivers more light to the Earth than any time of the year. So in that, that's also, just to kind of say here, it's activating us. It's giving us downloads. It's giving us energy upgrades. And like I said, if there's things that haven't been harmonized with you and partners or you and a, your beloved thing I'm seeing and I'll share with you in a minute, a lot of twin flames are doing role reversals right now. And there's a lot of harmony taking place with twin flames. And I'm going to share something about that in a minute. So stay tuned on that one. Don't, don't stay on here. <laughs> Keep listening. 
Um, but what this is doing in this, it's also bringing up by the subconscious or it's naturally kicking in for us to have this harmony with these people through dream state. So I can't tell you how many people I've heard in the last week to 10 days talk about the bizarre dreams that they're having, talk about how it's bringing back relationships and people in their lives that they don't even, for, maybe even forgot about and that is their, um, forgot that they even existed. Well, what it was is something wasn't complete with that person. So it's coming up through you in order to complete the contract, complete the lesson, clear out the energy that's not working, be able to correct the energy within you, and then take and collect what you needed from that experience. So as you go forward into this new timeline, your contract is basically basically complete with that person. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people about clearing contracts and clearing energy with that. I do have a, a complete your soul checklist um, below that's, you know, finishing your soul contract. So if you are still working on that and you haven't done it, it's very beneficial. I would recommend you use that below. The link is below for that too. So in this increased light, what it's doing is it, it's activating us. It's activating our chakras on so many levels. And in doing so, it's removing the interference for us. It's raising our vibration. It's giving us the upgrade so that we can increase our frequency to tap into this alignment with the abundance that is the about the landscape and about this Again, coming into alignment with the heart. So that's one reason why I'm seeing a lot of people have heart chakra activations with heart pain and dealing with a lot of really deep, deep release or attachment to people or energetic cords or like experiences or being revisited. And a piece of that could be to not just release the cords, release the attachment or detach from that person. But when you tap back into that experience, all the emotional range that you've had, that you've shut off, you've blocked, you haven't wanted to feel, you've hid from, you've ran from, is bringing that back to light to experience it, to basically activate your heart in the sections you've cut off and cut out and haven't wanted to deal with and haven't wanted to feel so that you can expand your emotional range because the greater you want to feel joy, that means the depths of your sorrow have to equal to create the expansion of the heart. So a lot of people, like I said, are having heart activations, heart pain, heart upgrades right now during this timeline. Um, the other thing is that I was mentioning the twin flames or a lot of this activation is one of the primary ones right now. And that's because also we've had leading up to this, we've had Mars and Venus that has also been in Leo passing leading up to these few days. And I got to tell you, as we came out of that new moon energy on J July 31st, where and we had shifted through that energy and also Mercury went direct, it really freed up the energy and the energy that was going so deep and heavy to go through these things It like, was like the weight was lifted and so many people started picking up speed in that, myself included, which by the way, I just have to tell you, if you've heard me talk about my card deck um, that I've been that I wrote about in Twin Flame Code Breaker and I've been working on and I said it was going taking me through my whole journey again and going through this process of really going deep within me to learn lessons of the fastest way to finish is to have fun and to find balance in my work and my life and myself and relationships and family. I feel like I mastered that. It was so beautiful the way it took me through that process, but it actually aligns with the closure tomorrow on the Lionsgate. So I've officially completed the manuscript. I'm waiting for the editor to send it back for a final review. And tomorrow, all of that project for three years I've been working on will be submitted tomorrow. And oh my gosh, I can't tell you the excitement. I can't tell you the gratitude. And it blows me away, the final project and I can't wait to share it and it be on, it won't be out till next year but I'll be sure to let you know it's going to be very cool but in this back to the twin flame part of this and the role reversals what we've had was I'm going to go back to the beginning and walk you through it so you can see the pattern of the harmony within the roles 
when we kind of like a few years ago, about four years ago, three, four years ago, especially, we had a lot of fine feminine that was out of sync with their feminine energy and they were masculine dominant and they were coming in very, um, in power, but in power in the wrong ways, the need to be in control, the can't let go, the no patience, the push and drive. And this is where the masculine had been very emotionally emasculated from their mothers, not knowing how to express themselves, not knowing how to tune into their vulnerable side. And if they did, not feeling shame and guilt for it because that's not meant to be manly, right? So what we have done in this process is the divine collective divine feminine, we have been able to let go of the um, really hard driving ways and learn to stand up in our empowerment side. But in doing so, that meant we had to, you know, create the goddess energy in and up of us to be able to experience balance, to be able to find the beauty in that, to have grace, to flow, not push, to allow, to be open to receive, to ask for help, to be able to um, create the space for a man of any sort to come into our lives if we're the female side of that. And then, so by us coming into this graciousness, this um, liberation of the heart and feeling more passion and finding more love for ourselves and being able to have a, the, finding the beauty and the ease and grace of grow, growing forward in a way that we've let go and surrendered some control, that has allowed the divine masculine to take some of the role as even as a collective, to stand up as the masculine power that they first had to stand for themselves to decide they want to be able to do their own inner work and their own power and start to take their power back. So a lot of the divine masculine and multiples have been like, they're finding themselves again and they don't want to create old mistakes. And so they're not ready to jump. They have, they've not been ready to jump into relationships because they're ready, they're working on themselves. And this is something that should have been left to be honored and respected because they're really been doing more of what this is. Now I'm talking the collective. That means the greater majority. You're not, it's not going to all be that way, but in the greater majority, that's what's been happening. And so in that, then, what the way we've kind of done that in our inner feminine side is we've had to, in the grace of our energy of our feminine side, and then not and giving it up and wanting the man to come in and opening the space, and then the divine masculine didn't really show up. We had to show up for ourselves, which actually healed our inner divine masculine because the inner divine masculine came in to support the feminine side now with grace. But came in to show up, step up, stand up, speak up, and do all the healthy masculine sides within us to align with that inner divine masculine to come into harmony within ourselves to then for our inner feminine to feel heard, loved, respected, that then has actually helped by healing that and coming into our balance that's opened up the divine masculine to heal their inner feminine so that they can tap into their own vulnerability, their own needs, and their own desires for higher love. And I made a post of this yesterday, and so many people were confirming what I'm about to tell you on this, because when I saw this kind of already happening in, around me two years ago, I saw this herd of white horses running along the beach in the water. And I made this post yesterday, so some of you might have saw it, and you probably saw this image before. But to me, it was like this representation of the divine masculine and the white coming in as purity, that they've done the work, they're, they're coming up into their enlightenment, they're waking up, they're desiring more love because they've been loving themselves and tapping to their own feminine. So they've been preparing for more of the harmonization within and more of the relationships. So I have been seeing another... Um, groups of twin flames coming in to start this harmonization process in physical 3d 
so that they're harmonizing together to do these role reversals together, but not the role reversals have kind of already been done. It's more like coming into the same playing field now, but here's the problem. And this is where I want to go into the four areas because um, what's happening is as the divine masculine has awakened, they're coming in I'm, and I saw several of them in the last week. They're working on themselves. They're telling me they're desiring love and they're even going back to approach the divine feminine the divine feminine is not trusting the process. They're not sure. They're not open up. They're closing off. And they're not sure they believe in this anymore. And so they haven't been open to necessarily now receive the divine masculine role of this, which is bringing the divine feminine back into this place of also in the harmonizing of this, of creating the harmony between like the actual union, because reunion, because we've been all the harmonization before has been internal. Now, this is like bringing it into the external physical reality. And so um, I can't tell you how many people I've seen that. And I got many like remarks to this from people that said, yes, they, they were agreeing. They were seeing the same things happen. So again, this is coming in right at the perfect time. And it's coming in with the landscape. And for me, what I feel like if we're going into hard harmony for the landscape and we're coming into balance and it's all about infinite bun abundance in this lion's gate. And it's, a you know, the lion's gate itself is the twin flame portal. You know, 8-8 eight, eight is like the infinity symbol, no beginning, no end. And um, it's all about connecting to infinity. Also, is an abundance and abundance of love and being able to tap into the higher love now that we've done. And one thing I will say about the Divine Feminine, what they've been doing is they've been, a lot of them have been stepping into and embodying the High Priestess energy that's helping to restore their own inner balance now. And they're like the key here, I think, is very important. A couple keys is going to be very important to remember to stay open to everything, attached to nothing, and allow this to happen. Because where I see people get really shut everything down is putting an intention on the outcome. The minute you put the intention on the outcome, you just shut the process down. So as you go forward in this, and this is just coming through, it wasn't one of my pieces to say, my four things that I'm about to tell you, you really need to not shut it down and keep that open and remove the outcome aspects. The other thing I've said is multiple times, you need to remove the labels because labels are tripping people up. It's tripping people up and hearing and thinking that as they're coming into harmony, that, oh my God, this means forever. So I can't see that now. So I'm going to back out of it. Um, just by that concept, I'm seeing that multiple, multiple times. And so not to mention in our like the divine feminines programming is that it's hard and you know i mentioned this last week i know a whole series is coming on like redefining the twin flame concept from what i've been seeing and to teach you guys some ways to like let go of that old program of the old twin flame paradigm dynamic and start if enough of us start looking at it in a new way it's going to open the portal even further faster and get everybody on board faster to coming into harmonization with true love with, that's really found in self and then with beloved removing labels and letting go of expectations and conditions and outcomes and a bullseye of a face of one person because remember you can't screw up destiny so all right now let me go ahead and let me i feel like that's complete so i want to share with you the four things that you can really kind of tune into in this energy to use this energy to accelerate your process of your personal process to go through it and activate you at your highest potential and use and embody and restore your inner balance so you can create the heart harmony to align with your infinite abundance okay so the first one is creation so i can't tell you creation 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 that everybody's ready to create and myself included has been doing all this creation work, as I mentioned, with the card deck in this. So the creation comes from the hidden potential that we have in us. So I'm seeing a lot of people go through these Kundalini activations. I mentioned this before, the sacral chakra. You want to really focus on that chakra from your own energy pattern of keeping that open, clear, free balanced 
And then another thing I want to tell you about the Kundalini, because everybody starts thinking, I want to work my Kundalini. I want to work my Kundalini. And they start thinking, they start trying to do something that they think that by doing it is going to activate their Kundalini to the greatest potential. And so they do all these things intentionally with all this action. What I'm being shown in the new way with the, the, the we've already kind of done that, that the best way is to stop, excuse me, stop trying to make that energy happen and that inferno happen. Like, like just know that it is happening and back up and allow it to take over. So if you've been working a lot on the sacral chakra and for creation and trying to unlock your hidden potential and tap into your Kundalini, what I would suggest to you is to know that that's what this portal of the lion's gate energy with all the fire energy and setting your heart on fire. And, you know, I'm even seeing visions. I mentioned this of, you know, these infernos going through the body and, um, it's all the fire energy. I actually have been working a lot um, multiple times with the dragon energy. The rainbow dragons have been coming through and doing a lot of work for this and um, helping us upgrade and activate into these higher Syrian energies. So um, the, and the other thing about that is with the creation, what people are really get hung up on is, well, what am I creating? Right. If I want to create, I know I want to create, but it's all this hidden power sitting there and you're not doing anything with it because you don't know what to do. So you really need to. That's where heart and harmony comes in. And I have some in the heart and harmony checklist. There's some things that can help you unlock some of that hidden potential to start to look at, you know, your passion. In fact, I have the 30 day passion project that is all about unlocking the hidden potential in you so that you can use that passion to align with the purpose, your purpose and then create from there. But what I was about to say is try to look, stop looking at an outcome, the same thing as the, the, the with the twin, and stop trying to figure out what you're trying to create, but start to stay present in the moment and tuning into things that you love to do, even if it's showing up at a dance class or an art class. Something that's just going to stir the energy and create like this playful energy. Oh my gosh, I got to tell you. In fact, I think I'll put a picture up here that I went to my granddaughter's birthday party over the weekend. It was a bubble bash. And oh my God, my inner child was in heaven. It was the most fun I'd had in a long time. And all these bubbles were just everywhere. And, you know, they're iridescent. It was so beautiful. And it was like raining bubbles. And I'm going through this bubble, you know, being rained on by these bubbles. And, Oh, it's just awesome. I, I think I'll put a picture up there because it was just really cool. So anyway, um, with that being said, I feel like moving to the second one. And the second one is taking back your power. So this is going to create the personal empowerment that you need. It means you're going to stand strong in your own truth. And it, But the, here's one, one of the big keys I'm seeing about taking back power right now is in a couple ways. One, it's in a way of being able to take action that you've been afraid to take and you haven't been willing to take because of the outcome situation of knowing something doesn't work for you or knowing that you need to end something that's no longer serving your purpose, but you're stuck doing it in fear. So that's going to be something that you're going to be asked to do. Take the action it takes to let that go, to regain your power back so that you can restore your root chakra, basically, to come into the worth and your own truth. And so a lot of root chakra work and root chakra repairs have been being done right now. I've been working on that with clients to hone in, to collect that energy back into the root chakra to create that uh, empowerment, so to speak, and that I am presence. On the flip side of this, so many people are needing to take action on their purpose or their mission but they don't know what the purpose or mission is, as I said. And so they're not taking action and all that hidden powers, I said, sitting there and it's robbing you of your peace until you move forward, until you take some action. And it's stirring you up in a way that is an inner battle. And so in the balance of this heart and harmony and you coming into alignment with your heart so that you can come into alignment with all this abundance is you're going to have to come into the balance of this inner battle, which is letting go of the resistance to change, letting go of the resistance to taking action, either going forward or clearing out your past. Those are going to be some really key things for you to look at as you, if you're feeling resistance, you know, look at it and start to see it as your teacher and know, identify with it and really stop for a second instead of 
pushing or running from it. Stop for a second and see it and say, you know, why are you here? What are you teaching me? What do I need to know? And then listen. And when that comes up and you feel like guided to like feel more in your heart, not the rationalization of your head, then start to make a decision to say yes to this new energy and move forward and shift out of that lower limitation or that being held back that has blocked you from moving forward. And also with that, so many people have done this work and they think they've done all this work and that shouldn't have be any more to do. I can't tell you how many clients that I've been doing these soul retrievals for and that there's these veils. So it's like the work's been done, but there's still this veil that's around them. And these veils have been dropping quickly than this work that I've been doing and is removing the, the uncertainty and turning it into like crystal clear clarity to go forward in a very impactful life-changing way. So, you, you know, definitely think of that as well. You know, removing, you know, and one of the things I've been teaching people, including you, to ask your guidance to what is hot, what's hidden still that I've not been willing to see and what's blocking me from connecting to them, my highest truth, my highest potential, so I can be willing to take action to step into that through this portal. The third thing is to trust your intuition. This is where the divine feminine are really being tested. And as I said, part of it's because. You're embodying your high priestess energy and restoring the inner balance says that you've really come into a place that you believe in yourself, you trust yourself, you trust the journey. But what you really need to make sure you do is, as I already mentioned this, is you need to be letting go of the outcomes, letting go of the expectations, and staying in a, this allowing mode, which leads me to number four, which is to stay open to receive. So one of the things with this universal timeline and these downloads and these upgrades of this energy, if you can stay open to receive, this energy is really coming in to activate you, to download, to upgrade, which brings me to a thought, you know, with my Awaken Your Soul Blueprint retreat that's going to be in about two and a half weeks, August 24th, 25th. If you've been thinking about it on the fence, it's going to be so impactful. And I was shown how even... That retreat piggybacks all this energy as to what I'm doing and to help people in that retreat live here in St. Louis, Missouri at the end of August here. So there'll be a link below too for that in case you're interested. So stay open to receive because now it's about allowing the things to show up to support you. It's about also knowing that because this higher timeline has came in as far as higher energy, receiving that, not just from the heavens, but also from the earth. Because Mother Earth has shifted its consciousness, raised her vibration and her frequency to a vibration of like the Schumann's resonance is showing how much higher the earth plane energy is now. And so that earth energy, if you're open to receive, and can I even and picture yourself linking and tapping into the core mother earth and pulling and embodying that energy in and through you and anchoring it to your heart as you bring the the higher downloads of the syrian energy of the lion's gate coming in and intersecting in the heart with the pyramidal shape is what i use even the merkaba the chariot of ascension to all of that come into this oneness even universally inward to support you this is going to also give you this resuscitation or reactivation or restoration of your heart from this external universal energy. Because I got to tell you too, I went to an event last week unprepared or not unprepared. What well, was it unexpected? I mean, no, it was spontaneous. I just it didn't know what was happening. And then I show up because I found out about last minute. And it was about um, with, I think I mentioned this last week, um, or I interviewed someone locally about the heart chakra, the nation, and the energy here, which I will also be sharing with you what that means and about grid work and timelines and stuff like that as to how what the grid work means that's coming. But um, basically, you know, in this energy, what I was seeing when I was actually touching people and put my hand on the heart, like they felt like almost like a paddle, you know, the paddles of like the heart jolt. And the energy being like revived. And I can't even tell you how many times I've done like resuscitations or 
reactivations of the heart all the way back to Atlantis in this last week. It's been coming through too. But a couple, several people have really felt their heart with this heart energy. And especially when I went into this event last week and I touched the heart and woke people up and they could feel it, you know, the jolt in the heart. So, um, yeah, that's exactly what, as I, I didn't even really realize that, but that if you had to sum up how this collective universal landscape energy is doing, it's giving us this jolt in the heart that's reviving our heart, restoring our heart, so our heart can come in harmony. Make sure to check that out below. So, <clears throat> thank you so much. I want to thank all you for your support, your love, your donations for Champ's mission for these videos. Um, please like, comment, share the shine. Let me know how things are going through this portal for you in the, in the messages and comments below. May you always face your fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. I'll see you next week. Namaste.